knocking over boar with big boars. We have air streaming, we have hot air, and Jamie is back on the farm on pest control duty. Welcome to Airheads. There's so many hogs in Texas and the United States that everybody loves to shoot hogs. Not only for the meat, just for the sport. We do everything we can to try to keep them under control and the population just keeps growing. <laughs> We're back in Texas where beaver and hogs are on the air gun menu. Terry Tate of Professional Big Boar Air Guns has been our guide for this hunting trip and a hog hotspot for us to try. Now this is the hog trap I use. The most I've caught in this one trap is 13 hogs in one night. Now in Texas we can sell live hogs, but we can't sell dead hogs. This is a bit of a busman's holiday for Phil and Dave Craven of Nightsight. They're seeing their creation being embraced by all sorts of hunters from Africa to America. And again tonight, they will be using one of their units on top of the Benjamin Marauder in FAC. Our first outing delivers a blank, even though we've had trail cam evidence of them being there. The camera kit noise in the high seat might have scared them, so we move to another feed station. It's Dave's turn to pull the trigger. The pigs are aware of something, but they hold still for long enough for Dave to get a perfect headshot. Oh, it's down. Oh, perfect. Oh. We have seen animals drop wow. to the shot before, but not like this. What we shot was a 70 pound sow with a crossman marauder right above the eye, exit on the other side. Little pig drop like a rock. This will be great eating, great eating pig. Shooting boar with an air rifle is controversial, especially in Europe, but in America they love this kind of hunting, and we have seen that when the shot is executed properly, they're not going anywhere. This is the maximum I'd shoot with that gun, but it works fine on that size pig if you hit them in the brain. You know, you have to put the bullet in the right spot much more so than you would with a firearm. Their brain's about the size of a quarter. So if you miss that brain, you're not hitting anything. The bullet will just pass through and the hog will run off. For more about Nightsight, go to nightsight.com. Well done, Orland. Accurate shooting by Dave there. Now someone who aims for accuracy but never quite achieves it, it's David with hot air. This is Hot Air. Production of the new FX Wildcat starts in March. The Wildcat is the first all new rifle to come out of FX's factory in Mariestad in Sweden. Features include a precise air regulator and a new magazine system that is easy to load. One of the stars of Para Olympic air gunning, 76 year old Betty Jeffrey, beat off a mugger with her wheelchair. Betty was riding her motorised wheelchair through a shopping centre car park when a woman approached her from behind and tried to grab her bag. Betty, who helped to train London 2012 para-Olympian shooter Adam Fontaine, smacked the woman in the face. Two passers-by gave chase and the thief dropped the bag and ran off. Daystate are among the air gun manufacturers attending the Northern Shooting Show. Held in Harrogate on the 7th and 8th of May, Daystate plans to show off its new Renegade, which looks like a Pulsar, but is a mechanically driven PCP like the Daystate Wolverine and Regal air rifles. Predator Extreme readers have voted the Benjamin Marauder their favourite air gun. This is the fourth straight year Benjamin has won the Reader's Choice Gold Award. Here's the award being presented to Benjamin Marketing Manager Chip Honeycutt. And finally, two of the Isles of Scilly have been declared rat free. A £700,000 scheme to protect seabirds saw more than 3,000 brown rats culled. That's more than £200 per rat paid for by the European Union. You are now to date with Hot Air, aiming for accuracy, targeting the truth. Thank you, David. Now let's head to Hampshire to see what the man with no hands, Jamie Chandler, is up to with his air gun. Well, 
Welcome to the frozen wasteland that is the Hampshire Downs. It is stunning here today. As you can see, we have frost, we have beautiful sun over there. It's a fantastic day to be out looking for vermin. We are here to hunt rabbits, although I have been running around after them all morning, quite frankly, I'm not necessarily having the best luck with them. So we're gonna stick with rabbits this afternoon. Fingers or other appendages you may or may not be blessed with crossed, we'll uh, see how we get on. Seen quite a few amazingly sort of medium sized, I suppose you call it, the age three quarters grown rabbits. Bearing in mind this is January, that means they were breeding through December. That's quite incredible if you think about it because it's just been so mild. This week hasn't been so mild, so I'm pretty much tucked up. I've got my BSA R10 with me. I'm using HN field target trophy pellets, so hopefully we're going to have some luck and I take something home for my rather brand new smoker. Looking forward to it. Someone asked me the other day why I use 2.2. To be honest with you, 177 is fantastic, 2.2 is fantastic. It's not the calibre that is an offensive hunting tool, it's us. So if we practice with a 2.2, you'll be brilliant with a 2.2. If you practice with a 177, you'll be brilliant with a 177. There are arguments and all those sort of things over ballistic coefficients and velocities and all that sort of stuff which are important and worth bearing in mind. But if you practice, if you know what you're doing with one calibre, you will be as good as it gets with that calibre. I'm not that bad out to sort of a limited range. I'd never really shoot over 50 yards and I'm much more comfortable within 35 yards. But what I'm saying is don't get hung up on calibres, on foot pounds, all that sort of stuff. Get hung up on practice. Practice, 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 and you will become a better hunter. We're trying to be as accurate as we can, to be as humane as we can, and to knock over vermin so we've got something to eat. Certainly that's why I'm doing it anyway. We've moved to a slightly more sheltered part of the farm. The wind's picked up inextricably, which is why I'm wearing this natty little pom-pom on me, which I think is rather dashing and debonair. We're going to try stalking along this field line here. There are rabbits up in those bushes behind me. We're going to try stalking in, setting up, and then firing up. So quite a tricky shot, especially in this wind, but hopefully the tree line will add some shelter. I genuinely hate stalking. Okay, after a good few hours of chasing rabbits all the way around the, the whole estate, we've come to the edge of the estate and we're going to tackle the, hopefully the rabbits in the horse paddocks just behind me. Air gunners love horse paddocks. I love horse paddocks. They're a fantastic opportunity for us to actually prove what an air gun can do over a powder burner while actually gathering some dinner, touch wood, and uh, being able to provide people with a tasty treat. Basically, I'm going to go and set up in a hedge. I'm going to give it sort of 27 to 30 yards. I'm going to wait until some rabbits come out and hopefully get a few. It's a beautiful day. If it wasn't for this wind, I tell you, I would just basically be in my mankini. So you're probably saving yourselves a treat. Okay, we have battle-hardened ourselves. I've shot through wind, I've shot through rain. 
I've missed quite a bit in this run, it's been crazy, but I've managed to bag a few as well, so pretty happy with the result. All permissions can offer something, whether you're sitting on a thousand acres or whether you find just the stables at the back of them. These are great opportunities that certainly we should be getting our hands on and, uh, and offering our services to, because quite frankly, these rabbits won't kill themselves. But it just proves you're getting close enough, you can still achieve things. It's been a great day, I've really enjoyed it, and quite frankly, I would rather be out here than anywhere else. I will see you very shortly. From Hampshire to the wider world of air gunning on YouTube, it is air streaming. Charlie Jacoby here, this is my roundup of the best air gunning on YouTube. Starting in the UK in part two of the Plank Experiment, the Squirrel Hunter team is out on two feeders at the same permission. The American Air Gun Hunter Extreme Channel has some time and some squirrels to kill, so stops by one of the permissions to do so. Throwback is on a roll, this is his 17th episode shooting rats with a Benjamin Marauder in Washington State, USA. An air gun channel from the Netherlands I have not seen before, great hair and a name I cannot pronounce that's a bit like tights and he is looking at what I think is a Chinese made band air gun in Dutch. Here is another video from the SHOT Show in Las Vegas. Rick Utzler is admiring the new Rex air guns from Evanix, which makes rifles from 177 all the way to 50 caliber. Here is the first of a few videos about the British shooting show by Andy's Range. It's his first look at the Daystate Renegade Bullpup. Mike Duffy from airgunreview.tv meets Air Arms Nick Jenkinson at the British shooting show. Nick is talking about another bullpup, the Air Arms Galahad. And finally off to Hawaii, where Michael from Addicted to Air Guns tries out run and gun tactical style shooting with an FX in Impact PCP. Links to watch the videos are in this film's description. If you'd like to send in a video for air streaming, ping me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Here is the latest from Air Arms TV. It is rat shooting with Paul Hodson. Paul is an Air Arms ambassador who has been shooting for more than 35 years, including rat and feral pigeon control with air gun sporting clays, pheasant pigeon and corvid control and fox shooting with night vision. His air gun of choice is an Air Arms S510 carbine PCP with a night side viper night vision unit. Click on the link on the screen to visit Air Arms TV. Thank you for watching. We're back in a couple of weeks. We'll see you then.